Hey everyone, welcome to season two of Unveiling Beauty. We are so excited after several weeks of being on hiatus to be back here with you. A whole new look and feel to the season, new great tips and tricks. If this is your first time tuning in, this show is all about tips and tricks for the beauty professional. It airs every Monday night with my co-host, Ammon Carver. Speaking of Ammon, how are you doing today, Ammon? Hey, what's up? Season two, I can't believe it. This is awesome. Um, it feels like a long time, but at the same time, it went really fast. Everything is just merging together. Uh, but I know, Nick, I, I share your excitement that we have got such a cool lineup of shows planned and the season is just going to be awesome. And something that, that caught my eye that I thought would be particularly great for this first first episode is really like a heartwarming stormy story. Um, and. I want to make sure that I get it right because it's really hit. So I'm going to read a couple of notes here about this amazing man. Um, he's a principal in Delaware, a principal at a school, and he was noticing that one of his students was feeling like disconnected from the rest of the kids. Um, he's being made fun of because his parents apparently couldn't afford to give him a proper haircut. Um, and so Principal Newton offered to give the student a haircut after, um, and after that, uh, this kid's confidence just skyrocketed through the roof. Any of us who do hair, we've seen that happen. I can already see it right now. It makes me just like, uh, I just love, I just love that about, about our industry. Um, but he then goes on to uh, go ahead and uh, create, um, open like a barber shop in the school for his students, where he's like giving cuts to them on a regular basis and helping them with their confidence. And it's just turned into this like amazing, really inspiring story where he used something that he could do to help build the confidence of these kids. And I was like, that is exactly a perfect current event story that we can highlight. So Principal Newton, hats off to you, my friend. Thank you so much for just like doing what we all do and sharing that love. And I just thought, what a great way to kick off season two. What a story, huh? Yeah, like, that's such a great, like great story. I love it that he's a principal and a barber all in one. Yeah. <laughs> what Not a cool, cool guy. I would love to meet this guy one day. Maybe we'll have to make that happen. <laughs> Maybe he'll see it and like want to be on our show. Maybe you right. never know. You never know. <laughs> and if you guys are joining the show today, make sure to engage with all of us. We want to hear all your comments. We want your questions as well. We have some amazing guests lined up for today. We want you guys to put everything in the chat. Uh, you might have an opportunity at the end of the show uh, to hear how you can win a special prize as well. Hey, hey, hey. so speaking of guests on the show today, right, Nick? So we, uh, if you guys haven't been paying attention, which I hope you have, I will definitely not waste any uh, any more time introducing our two guests that we have on today. We have our very own pro team member, Danielle Keesling. And then we also have uh, Jamal Edmonds, who's a celebrity hairstylist and artist from Mizani, joining us. Both amazing, and I want to welcome them both to the show right now. Hi, guys. How are you? Hello. Hi. How are you? Nice to see you We're both. Here. <laughs> you too. Thank you. Thank you guys for helping us uh, launch season two. <laughs> what was that, Danielle? A kicking off season two. I yeah, love yeah. it. We did, yes. we did a really great season one, so I love that we're extending it and I feel like we have a lot more to offer to the industry. So mm -hmm. I love bringing on all these amazing artists and just joining forces. I agree. I couldn't agree more. So we're talking all about fall trends today. So talk to me. What are you guys going to be sharing with everyone today? Yeah, so I want to talk about a little bit, I'm always inspired by fashion and I'm always inspired by Fashion Week and the runway. And unfortunately with the situation that we have going on, we you know, don't get to go and indulge in so much Fashion Week, but I did a little research and I do want to talk about like, how can we take runway to reality? And, you know, we're still doing Zoom calls, but I think the world is opening up a little bit and we have some places to go and some things to do. So I'm going to take a look from the runway that you could take into a day look and then transform into an evening look using accessories. So this is going to be a way to control the hair, create a nice elegant or deconstructed chignon that can then be transformed using accessories or using glitter or using any type of um, bands and kind of creating like a little bit more of an edgy fashion editorial style. Sounds awesome. Awesome. And I am going to share with you all um, the perfect ponytail. And so 
I think that ponytails are always um, on trend, um, no matter what season it is. You know, everyone likes a snatched pony. So I am going to talk to you, especially about placement, um, how to get the ponytails really, really high and really tight. A few ticks and, um, tricks and tips that I have, um, that I have in my arsenal that I use in a salon all the time to help um, everything stay in place. And then I'm also going to add some accessories and I'm going to add some extension hair. So I'm super excited and thank you guys for having me too. Um, it's such an uh, honor to be here with all of you amazing uh, alter people. <laughs> yeah, alter people. <laughs> Listen, it's, Jamal, it is our honor. It is our honor to have you on the show. Um, and I, we, we take being called alter people as a high, high compliment. So thank is, you for that. <laughs> uh, so while you two are, are working, um, and I, cause I know that you're going to be busy with your hands and hair and we'll be able to see what the details, I'm just going to ask as you're working, um, why you think I'll start with you, Danielle. Um, like why, why do you think that like what you're showing right now feels like particularly on trend for fall? So, you know, I think that right now everybody's trying to create some easier DIY styles and no. You know, within the salon as well, these are these are in, these these can be as pushed and editorial as you want them, or they can also be a great foundation to teach your clients how to do at home. So, because everyone's a little bit more, you know, looking at safety and not wanting to leave as much and going in to get their hair done at the salon, these are things that you can teach your client how to easily do at home. And as you can see. I'm, I broke this down and I always talk about hair mapping and controlling the hair. So I basically divided out the front of this hair, pulled it to the side and I'm, I created a ponytail from the very crown in the top to the bottom nape that's a little offset. So this entire top section and front section is gonna come back as well to marry this, but a lot of the time our clients have a hard time controlling all of their hair, especially if it's very thick. So by breaking it down into two sections, the back and the front, they'll be able to get that nice, tight, sleek uh, pony into a chignong, and then they will be able to have this veil of hair that we can secure into that pony and we can pull out pieces around the front or as necessary as we need. So I'm just gonna keep working in that. Awesome, awesome. Well now, Jamal, I'm gonna to toss it to you with a similar type of vibe. So you talked about that snatched pony. Um, <laughs> and and I, I feel like that's, that's definitely a fall trend or a trend of some sort. But you also spoke about how uh, ponytails in general are always always in fashion, always on trend, right? So elaborate a little bit about what you're doing and why it's particularly on trend for fall. All right, so um, I'm gonna swap my mannequins out because I have one that I've prepped and I wanna show you how I use it to create a really um, high ponytail. And so here, what I did is I normally section the crown of the head out and that is kind of where I create my first pony. And then what I normally do is I take my uh, blow dryer and I'll do some directional blow drying. And then I will snatch this hair on top of that. And so what happens mm -hmm. is you're able to get it extremely high um, with using two ponies. I think that uh, for me, this was something that I learned very, very quickly, uh, very earlier on in my career, being able to, um, to put it or place it where I want it. And I think that's super important because we all know sometimes, I mean, you know, it calls for a low uh, kind of sexy uh, pony, but sometimes you want to have fun. And, and the girls always want a nice pony that's on top. Um, you know, maybe you can wear it to the side, but I think that's a cool tip that you can use in salon, on set, or even editorial styling. And I want to show you this one. So basically I've done the same one with this mannequin. And um, as you can see, she's kind of snatched up really high. And what I also do is I use these um, strips. They're just white paper strips that I that you can use for molds and sets. And I actually take my hairspray, I spray it on a um, color brush, and then I would just basically make sure that all of the hairs are laid, and then I would wrap it with this. 
So this is a really, really cool way um, to keep everything in place and to keep it all kind of like snatched. And then you can kind of start working on like where you want to, like however you want to create your actual pony, then you will start working there. So what I've also done is I've taken some um, Marley hair from just the beauty supply store. Um, I matched the color up as, as close as I could. And I, I used some um, Mazzani's lived in finishing spray. And I love this spray because it, um, it kind of makes, it dries it out a little bit. So because it's synthetic hair, we don't want it to look super shiny. And so what I've done is I've taken a brush, sprayed it, and I've backcombed it a little bit. But what I'm going to do is create a really cool silhouette. And then I am going to attach this to her head and we're going to put some jewelry in and then I'm going to do some more attaching of uh, the extension hair. That's so cool. Um, you know, talk to me about some of the fall trends that you're seeing right now that you're just in love with. So for me, um, I am a curly hair guy. So all of my, most of my client base in the salon, um, they love curly hair. That's kind of my niche. And um, they are transitioning into fall. So they want uh, really good shapes and they want amazing color. And um, they want to be able to wear their hair naturally curly. So for me, that's kind of what I've been seeing. I think even, um, you know, uh, in, in magazine and in print, I've also seen people actually really playing around with their natural curls. So I've actually really enjoyed it because I feel like it's finally time that people, yeah. you know, you know, want to play around with what they actually have mm -hmm. and not always being committed to either relaxers or blow drying. So yeah. that's kind of what I've seen and um, I've actually been enjoying it. I've also seen a lot of braid work, you know, um, braids are, it seems that braiding, um, whether it's twisting, um, some type of intricate braid is always somewhere on the runway or somewhere in fashion. So I think that's a, a really good um, trend to follow also. So do you feel like with your guests coming in the salon right now, you said you, you love curls, so I'm assuming a lot of your clients have natural curly hair. Yes. Are they looking for now that it's transitioning seasons, are they partial to say, you know what, I had fun with the curl all summer, now I want the braids for fall, or are they vice versa, or what are you seeing right now? So for me, um, most of them are enjoying their curls. They, they're yeah. loving their curls, but they want some type of um, transitional color, I would say. Okay. And it's, it's so funny because for me, my clients are always like, oh, I want to go really, really light, you know, when spring and summer comes, but then for whatever reason, fall comes and they're like, oh, I want a nice fall color. And fall colors to them are like coppers and reds, and, um, beautiful, beautiful uh, browns. And so I've done a lot of that or just adding dimension or maybe low lighting what they've already had. Um, so it's been fun. All Danielle, right. so I want to I want to talk to you. Sorry, Nick, I, don't, I, I can't resist. I, wanna, I, I see the progress that she's making and I actually so what I'm seeing is kind of like a common thread that I know that you guys are both going to get to, but I want to touch on it right now is you both talked about accessories. And I feel like what I've been seeing, and I, uh, I want to get your guys' take on this individually, of course, uh, but I'll, I'll start with Danielle, is um, right now accessories for me, it's like accessories, accessories, there, there can't be too many accessories right now. Are you feeling that same vibe when it comes to, to, to accessorizing? I noticed you were planning on using some. Oh, me and yeah. accessories. <laughs> <laughs> I have every accessory on this tray right now that I'm going to talk about. But what I do want to talk about before I talk about accessories is like, where do we accessorize it, right? So I'm focusing on She's got, uh, I wanted to play off of her center part. So she's got a nice, beautiful face, a nice center part. So I'm gonna accessorize it right down the part line. But again, talking about control of this hair, I, 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 you can see that this veil now, I'm starting to work into over the ponytail. And this way, my clients can pull this top veil out to get a little bit more volume. So because I followed the way that her hair falls, I'm e I'm very easily able to do that. The other thing I want to talk about real quick is that these rope twists, I saw this on Fashion Week and I saw this on the runway a good bit. And you guys all know that when I talk about texture, I'm always talking about how do you create texture without having to like get an iron out if they don't have texture in their hair, right? So I did two strand rope twist. The original ponytail that I secured back here, I divided it in half 
And then I took those two halves and I did two rope twists from it. Then secured them with elastics because elastics never fail you. And now I'm pulling these out. So when I take these two rope twists, because ropes are not braided, they don't, braids lay flat, ropes lay very cylinder. Ropes will give you volume and support. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna pull these ropes apart a little bit. And then when I get into it, I can actually take these two, you know, two ropes or two cylinders and make a really nice chignon. So I secured this back section over first because I want that to tuck in. I'm gonna twist these two ropes and then I'm gonna take my side section and that way I'll be able to actually wrap that hair around and hide everything. And then we're gonna talk about the accessories and how we wanna accent it without taking away from what's going on in the hair. It's all about hiding all of those little things that we don't wanna see, right? The twist <laughs> to, to hide all the things holding it together, I love it. Jamal, talk to me about what you're doing there. I see that you got it nice and tight. Where are you going next in your style? So I am now, um, since I have it nice and tight, I have some accessories here that oh, is wow. also connected to um, this. And I'm going to extend her pony with, um, with these cool little rings that I have. So I created some rings. And so basically what I do, what I did with the hair is I took it and back combed it, sprayed a little um, lived in texture finishing spray. And then I kind of molded it into just like a, a Afro puff, I would call it. And then I took some rings and I added rings together. And so what I'll do here is um, I'm going to add my ring here. So you want to make sure that you're grabbing some of her actual hair with the extension hair so that it's nice and sturdy. And now what I'm going to do is then attach um, I'll attach this here. And so it's a really cool, like, um, I think I have one more, but basically what I'll do is attach the rings here and then I'll go back into shaping and I'll, and I have another one to add here. That's fun. I like that. Yeah. I, so it's funny because, uh, Jamal, when you were, when you first started, you're like the perfect pony. And I'm like, but he's doing a bun. And now I'm like, oh, he's <laughs> the foundation of the, po the, the, yeah. the, the foundation of the pony is, is the same, right? The way you created yeah. the pony is the same. And then you now taking it to uh, an elevated level or yes. it's actually relating perfectly with the Danielle's like, you're taking it to the runway, like, right? So, um, <laughs> so it's cool because now you're creating that same silhouette of the ponytail, but like using accessories to, to yeah. create the illusion of, a, of like a full ponytail. Same steps, same principles. Yeah. So uh, I feel like that's the part that's interesting and I'll let you elaborate on it, but as uh, you know, as somebody at home, placing that high pony was like the, the same process, correct? Yeah, so the same process as far as how you're placing it, um, same two ponytails, making sure that the ponytail in the middle is centered or wherever you want it. And then you would take everything around it, you know, with, with doing your directional blow drying. Um, I love to use the comb attachment. It's easier for me, especially dealing with textured hair. So I use my comb attachment. I'm making sure that I um, blow everything in the direction that I want it to go in. And then I would secure the first pony and then I'll secure the first one on top of it. So I love the, um, these little um, bungee cords are really, really good. Um, this one, sorry, I don't know. It's just a, a really good bungee cord, but um, for me, this is really cool to get a really, really good snatch cone. And basically it has like the bungee on each end, but what happens is you're able to hold it and then wrap it as tight as you can. And, um, and it's also super comfortable for the salon guests too. For me, what I see what I see a lot of is people feeling more free to use accessories more than ever. But then there is that part where it's almost like that rule of thumb. I don't remember if you guys were familiar, but it's like put all your accessories on then to make sure you take one off because wow. then you'll be yes. right on just editing, right? <laughs> the rule of thumb. Um, yeah. But I think right now, because there's so many pictures, I see them all over our social media and I'm glad it's a perfect timing to kind of transition to what Danielle's got going on over there is like people are like, 
they're really just taking very simplistic styles sometimes or that look very simplistic and then just adding an accent of a few accessories, but more so than ever before, right? Danielle, you feel the same way? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, this is a perfect example. And I think to what Jamal was saying, it, it it's where you put the accessory, right? It, it's, yeah. it makes sense. <laughs> Like, if, are you going to do a style that like, you know, you're just, you do a style and then all of a sudden the accessory just goes in and it's like a fascinator. And <laughs> you're like, why is that there? I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know, to, to my point is, you know, I, I wrapped this, wrapped these sides around the Shenyang and Again, to break this down, I created the Xingyang, just like Jamal was talking about, in two steps, so it's very easy to control. And then I wrapped this hair around from both sides after I did the crown. The great thing is, is that like, because this is multiple sections, I can pull this and make it more airy if I want. Obviously, the accessory that I used is following the actual wrap around and I can go in and like edge this out, make it a little bit more airy, make it the style breathe, give her a little bit of texture on the face if I want. And that's the beauty of being able to, you know, manipulate the hair after we have it in the style. And when we put it up in sections, which I have to say a lot of people don't do. They don't break hair down. They just want to put, if they want to put it up, they want to put it all up in one like fall swoop. Yeah. So, you know, by breaking it down into sections, you have a lot more control and you have a lot more ease on how to create a little bit more of that airiness and that texture as you go in and expand this out. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of expanding it out. The accessory that I used is a headband. It's got two bobby pins on each end. And, you know, again, to his point, I'm not just going to like stick the headband on and let it hang down or do something weird that's not going with the flow of the hair. So, you know, by by going with the flow of this hair into the Xingyang and then following it up around, where that hair breaks at the top, I'm just gonna take her take her off, but where that hair breaks at the top and is actually going back now from that part line, obviously that makes sense for that to sit there. And then into the Xingyang and wrapping around the Xingyang to just finish that off. It makes sense, it works, and it's complementing, complementing the style, so. Very pretty. It's very beautiful. Thank you guys. I love both these looks. Totally different, but totally cool. Um, and that's what that's all about, right? Yeah, Jamal, why don't you like, I feel like you take her off the stand and give her like, she needs an opportunity to like swing <laughs> that like pony a little bit. Take her off the stand. <laughs> but this is kind of what, how it would, this is kind of what love it, it would look like. Um, He's ready for the mat. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to do something fun. Like I haven't been on set and um, I haven't been able to really be as creative as I would like to. So I thought I would do something fun um, tonight. Really cool. But um, also this is, you know, you can play around with this. So even though it's a perfect pony, like you can always, you can take some rings out. You can, um, it can, you know, you can wrap it. So it could look something like this, or yep. it's so many different ways that you can kind of play with it. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just thought that this was a really cool way to kind of um, add some editorial um, fun to um, just a basic ponytail. You know what's cool about that too? This is great for someone who has like long hair envy and maybe they have shorter hair that you could just get into mm -hmm. a little nub of a pony. Yeah. Then you could build this style off of it so they can yeah. have a fun long style for a night. Yeah, I love I loved watching also like while uh, while Danielle was finishing up and you guys are both doing like the hairdresser finishing touches. We've all been locked. Like, <laughs> we've taken a break and they're like the creator. I just love watching and I love that we're all bantering at the same time. But he got out his scissors and he was like edge trimming a little bit. And <laughs> yes. making, those, making those like little bubbles, but like a perfect little poof, like to, like you said. Yeah. Well, listen, you guys. They look great. You guys both did an excellent job of giving us some great tips that were relevant for, for fall trends, but also taking us to a place that got, got exciting. I think that uh, I feel a very strong common theme here with uh, with the accessories and making sure they're placing them to, and using them to your advantage. Um, but just a very big thank you 
episode one of season two, uh, our first guest of this amazing season that's coming up. So just thank you guys so, so much for your expertise, your professionalism, and for sharing your knowledge with uh, for everybody watching. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yeah. Bye-bye. See you guys. So in season two, we're doing something new where we're going to be spotlighting an artist on every single show. So Ammon, why don't we talk about who we have today? Yeah, so very excited to be able to uh, highlight and really showcase um, people within our ranks that we're very, very proud of and uh, really get an opportunity to celebrate them as as older beauty people, as Jamal called us earlier, which I love so much. Um, and so today we have uh, Jason Rosario with us. Um, so I wanted to welcome Jason to the show. Um, how are you, buddy? Good, good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah Jason, you. uh, you're, from, you're from Miami, right? Yes, from Miami, Florida. All right. So, um, tell us about like your role. How many, How long have you been with Ultimate Beauty? Like we know. I mean, Nick and I, because we know who you are. <laughs> um, but like, tell the audience like where you're from and uh, like how long you've been working with Ultimate Beauty. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, you hit it on the nail. From Miami, Florida. Been here all of my life. Grew up here. Um, services district educator. Um, been with Ulta Beauty. I will say on and off for 13 years, but I use that, I'm proud of that on and off because it really has given me the opportunity to kind of like just develop and my skills and really just kind of um, grow within Ulta Beauty. So I'm grateful, grateful for that um, opportunity to kind of be with the company, but also being able to go out and really understand like the importance of like culture and like um, just the morale and the vibe that I have, that have been able to experience while I've been with Ulta Beauty. That's awesome. Jason, so for those watching that doesn't know, like what does a services district um, educator do? Why don't you tell them a little bit about your role? Yeah, of course. So we're all things education. So we teach um, all the stylists that are in my district, obviously in my district, but within the company um, to help them hone in in the craft and, and to be able to um, just kind of perfect the skill just a little bit more and to get them just out of their comfort zone a little bit and, and also just to be able to show them new things that they're not, maybe don't typically, services they don't typically provide behind the chair. So yeah, just kind of, again, everything, all things um, education. That's so great. And listen, I'm w loving, I'm very proud of all the education. I've been watching you very closely. You are one heck of an educator. Um, but I think one of the things that I also want to make sure that we talk about is that you work behind the chair. You're an educator, but you're taking guests behind the chair. And so specifically related to this show, I want to know what your guests behind the chair right now are asking for most when it comes to fall. Absolutely. So I've been getting a lot lately of like, um, you know, just depth, darker colors um, behind the chair because we, we are trending into fall season. So, I mean, as I scroll through Instagram every single day, it's like social media is like a whole nother like job as in its own, right? So as I scroll through social media every single day, I see a lot of blondes. We see a lot of beautiful, beautiful blonde colors. But um, my guests now that we're getting into the fall season are starting to ask for those balayages that are more darker. So we're starting to ask for more browns, more caramels, more chocolates, those coppers, those reds that really pop. So um, yeah, I'm starting to to hear a lot more of that but also um, because we're in Miami we don't really get the opportunity to wear a whole lot of fringe because of the heat and the humidity that we have here um, just bringing back some of the, that fringe for the holiday and for the fall um, exciting because again we don't get the opportunity to really wear that year round here and um, so the curtain fringe bringing back some of the curtain fringe and the side fringe and so that's some of those styles that I'm super excited that my guests have been requesting lately. All right, so speaking of guests, if someone is watching and wants to come get their hair done by you, where are you located? What store? So I'm in the Kendall Gate Shopping Center store that's down in um, Miami, Kendall, Florida, um, store 160 and representing. Super proud of that location. Um, super busy and super <laughs> proud of that location, yeah. Awesome, that's and if they want to find you on social media, where can they find you? Um, so it's um, at hair by underscore JJ time, J-A-Y, J-A-Y-T-I-M-E. I love it. We'll slide that in there for you guys so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to you guys <laughs> all right, Jason, thank you so much for being on the show, buddy. Um, thank you for all you do, for being one of the old people and for your sharing your passion educationally and uh, and also with our, with our guests that are coming every day. They need it more than ever. So thank you so much, buddy. Yeah, and thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. Have a good one. We'll see you soon. You as well. Take care. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that's a wrap for our first episode of Unveiling Beauty Season 2. Very cool. So we have a new little twist this season. Tomorrow at 6 p.m., you can go on to Instagram and check out. Ammon and I will be doing a live chat. And remember when we said earlier you might get a giveaway? Well, if you paid any attention to the brush that Danielle was using, we're going to be giving that away tomorrow um, to one of these lucky viewers who've been asking a bunch of cool questions there. And Ammon and I are going to take some of these questions and we're going to answer them uh, on our Instagram channels. And uh, we'll, then we'll also, I just want to let you guys know we are coming back at you. Um, next time, the next episode is going to be about keeping that color. So episode two, season two, coming up next. And that's, uh, that's a wrap for today, Nick. I love it. Don't forget to follow us on Unveiling Beauty on Instagram, as well as on the YouTube channel here. We'll be back every single Monday with you. But until then, have a great day, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.